Hi everyone. Our next story today is called Last Stop on Market Street. And in this story, CJ and his grandma take a bus ride together and they discover all the beautiful things in their neighborhood. Here we go. CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under Nana's umbrella, saying, How come we gotta wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that the big one is drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on the flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We've got a bus that breathes fire, and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the doors swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across from them was tuning his guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniffing the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in the back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? So he's wishing that he had the, I guess, iPhone or iPod there to listen to music. And Nana's telling him that he has a real musician right there on the bus with him. CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking his strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers, too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling across crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full, and he was lost in the sound. And the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended, and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around and stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti-tagged windows and boarded up stores. 
He reached out for Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over there? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you better witness what's beautiful. So she's telling him to look up at the beautiful sky. CJ saw a perfect rainbow arching over the soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful wherever, she, whenever he never thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamps still lit up bright and the stray cat windows shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, Me too, CJ. Now come on. And that's the end. So that's a nice story about CJ and his Nana, his grandma, uh, taking a bus ride together. It makes me think of the different things that I would do with my grandma when I was little. One of the favorite things that me and my sister did with my grandma is we would sleep over her house and then the next morning we would go to Friendly's and get breakfast and she would even let us have ice cream in the morning and then she would take us to the dollar store and we would each get five dollars and we could buy five things at the dollar store. So I hope that if you spend time with your family, whether that's your parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, you remember all those memories, um, you know, 20 years from now because they're really special. While they might not seem like big deals now, when you get older, you're going to really cherish them, just like CJ will cherish these trips on the bus with his grandma. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.